In part one of this episode, I sit down with drag performer Vicky DeVille and discuss what it's like to be a cisgender female doing drag, what dating is like as a drag performer, and what our biggest drag aspirations are. In part two, we're going shopping for an outfit for me. Vicky is going to dress me and turn me into a drag queen. The majority of drag performers are individuals who are assigned the male gender at birth and perform as women. For a lot of drag performers, this is acting, playing a character. This is not the same as being transgender. But of course, people who are transgender can also do drag. Really, anyone can do drag regardless of gender, sexual orientation, race, whatever. Now, I'm not saying that just because you could do it means you should. Because let's be honest, not everyone will be good at it. Hi, I'm Thomas, and I'm a sex researcher. And I'm Vicki DeVille, and I'm a drag queen. Vicki DeVille is a New York City-based drag performer and in 2018 won the Scene Queen Award at the Glam Awards. And she is a highly acclaimed Christina Aguilera impersonator with a passion for cutting edge makeup. So Vicky, for people that may not know you yet, there's something about you that is a little bit different than some other drag performers. You are what is commonly kind of called a bio queen. I'm a woman who does drag, which is not typical. It's kind of uh, considered alternative drag, almost like a little part of the bigger drag picture. But I stopped using the term bio queen because I actually found out that bio queen is trans exclusionary. Okay. So I guess that makes sense. I had so even, trans I women who it. do drag are women who do drag, but they're not bio queens because they're not biologically female. So instead of saying bio queen, faux queen, hyper queen, I just use the term drag queen. The politically correct term for what I do is AFAB, A F A B, which means assigned female at birth. So how did you get into drag? I had gone through this breakup where I was like really devastated about it. It's one of those things I was dating for like 10 years, you know, all my 20s, you know, thinking that marriage is what I had to get married, I had to meet someone, I had to have kids, like that's what everyone yeah. pressures you to do. So when I had gone through this breakup, I turned 30, I was just having kind of a life change. And I said, you know what, I really need to just focus on my mental health and focus on myself. So I'm just going to do whatever makes me happy. During that time, I was like reconnecting with some of my old friends. We used to go out every week to the gay bar to watch Drag Race. And it was it was so exciting. It was like everyone was like so into it. And it was like a, it was like watching a football game where like everyone's like rooting for their favorites and like cheering and booing. And it was like so much fun. And I look at these drag queens and I was like, wow, like they're beautiful. Like I just loved their representation of women. So how terrified were you, or maybe excited, um, the first time that you like did drag at a bar in front of other people? I was so anxious because I'm, I'm kind of an introvert like out of drag. So there, the first time I performed it was a celebrity impersonation contest and I was like okay this is my show. I'm gonna do Christina and all my friends came out to support me and it was just such a great feeling of like, wow, like they really like, like this and like I can be a part of this and like, you know, it makes me happy and it just felt right. So it sounds like Christina Aguilera was a huge inspiration for you mm -hmm. in the beginning and now, yeah. um, which you have to follow Vicky on Instagram because there are tons of photos that she posts and a lot of them are Christina Aguilera looks. And I believe it was a few months ago, you probably know the exact date <laughs> that uh, Christina Aguilera actually liked one of your photos oh and you God. lost your mind. I did, of course I lost my mind. <laughs> she liked it, the, her makeup artist liked it. I was like, I was like, am I dreaming? Oh, that's so, a verified account and that's like Tina, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this is not normal. <laughs> you checked it twice, made sure that it was actually Oh yeah, account. and then someone commented, oh my god, Christina liked it, and I was like, okay, it's real. One time I got a message saying that Alanis Morissette started following me on Twitter, and then I clicked on it, it was a fake oh, Alanis Morissette oh, profile. I was, yeah. I was very upset. So Christina Aguilera, obviously a huge inspiration, but if you kind of started getting into drag because of Drag Race, mm -hmm. I'm assuming that some of the queens that have been on there have also been big inspirations for Oh you. yeah. 
Um, I'm obsessed with Naomi Smalls. The minute she came out into the workroom, I was like, who is the supermodel? And she was actually the first YouTube video that I Googled. It was like Naomi Smalls makeup. And um, this great uh, YouTuber, Lucy Garland, who does incredible makeup, she was one of the first videos I had watched. So I just started trying to incorporate it into my like everyday looks, just like the way that they contour and like cut their crease and their eyeshadow. But then it was just like, go big or go home, and I would get bigger, a bigger wing, a bigger lash, I'd start gluing my brows down, and before you know it, it was just full drag makeup. As Dolly Parton says, it takes a lot of money to look this cheap, but drag <laughs> is not a cheap hobby. It's very expensive. There's so many things that go into it. Start off with the basics, you know, buy one really nice lace front wig, learn how to take care of it, clean the lace, brush it out, you know, buy some eyelashes and same, you know, same with the cosmetics, you know, start small and then you'll eventually grow your collection the more and more you do it. What is one of your, like, I guess, biggest drag dreams? I know a lot of people dream of, like, going on Drag Race and, or, like, having their own show in New York or performing in New York and you've done some of those things. One of my biggest dreams, like, I absolutely love drag makeup and like doing drag makeup is almost like therapeutic for me because hmm. people always ask me oh how long does it take you to get ready and I was like well it takes about two hours I'm like what like I could never sit and do my makeup for two hours but I like it you know you just sit you and your face in the mirror like put the phone away just like put on some music and it's almost like drawing like I would sit for hours as a kid and just draw cartoons draw fashion illustrations so this is essentially me drawing on my face with makeup instead of like paints or markers. So I would like love to have my own drag makeup beauty line, mm -hmm. just focusing on drag specific products such as some sort of eyebrow glue or maybe like specialized pencils for filling in your eyebrows okay. or different sprays to change your skin tone a little bit easier. Makeup trends like come from drag queens. Sure. Like Kim Kardashian with all of her contouring, like where do you think that came from? Like mm -hmm. drag queens have been doing that since forever. What is it like dating as a person that does drag? First of all, dating in New York City <laughs> is a nightmare <laughs> for anyone, okay? It's true. Let alone someone who does drag, you know? It's just, it's really hard. It's really, really, Hard. I actually like said like I don't even want to date like at all. I don't have time for it because I have a day job, I have my drag night job, and then all my free time, you know, I barely get to see my friends and family. How am I going to start dating? It's just for me, it was like really hard. So, um, and I had done online dating like forever ago with no luck, but I was like, well, maybe. I'll just try it again. It's been like so long time has passed. And everybody does it now. Yeah. Everyone does online dating now. Right. So I I set up this dating app page, but it was very minimal in terms of what's on my profile. It was like just photos of me out of drag. And then uh, there were a couple little questions that they'd asked you. Uh, one of the questions was, um, don't hate me if I, and I was like, love to sleep, you know? And then another one is some like guilty pleasures. And I was like, oh, Real Housewives and RuPaul's Drag Race. You know, that, that was like the, as far as it went in terms of mentioning drag. So I matched with this guy. He was in, based in New York, Upper West Side. You know, we had been messaging a little while and he was like, okay, well, let's go out for drinks on Wednesday. And I was like, okay, great. Sounds wonderful. What's your number? Wednesday comes along. I text him I'm like, hey, it's Vicky from, actually, I, actually I had Victoria on my, uh, dating app because I because Victoria is my birth name. Vicky just happens to be my drag name as so my drag funny. persona. Like yeah. I obviously kn would like know that, but I've known yeah. you for years and I've never thought like thought of you as Victoria. Yeah, well, or... you're. Oh, I call you Tommy, and your name is and, Thomas. Yeah. It's the same thing. <laughs> so he wrote back and he was like, "Hey, Victoria." He's like, "You know, I just want to make sure that you." watch RuPaul's Drag Race and aren't going to be a future contestant on RuPaul's Drag Race because dating in this city is very diverse and you never know. What is he trying to say, like, that he... It doesn't even sound like he's saying he wouldn't date someone that does drag. It sounds like he's saying he wouldn't date someone that wants to go on Drag Race. I don't know, but as soon as he sent me that text, I got this pit in my stomach, like, this is not going to end well. Yeah. <laughs> so I played very coy and I was kind of just like, oh, well, I've never auditioned or anything. And 
And then I wanted to say to him, like, why are you homophobic? Because if you are, like, this conversation is right. over. But I wrote back, I was like, I was like, oh, like, do you have something against drag queens? Trying to be like, like, what did you mean by that last statement? Then he continued to write back and said, oh, well, I have nothing against drag queens, but I just need to make one thing clear. I like women. And I was like, does he think I'm not a woman? Like, what gave him the impression? Why would he say this to me when right. my my profile had all pictures of me out of drag? Just it said I was female. I was just like, it was and like out a, of drag. You're still very like female presenting. Yeah, it was just so ironic. I was like, that's like. The, so how was the day? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I didn't even take the time to correct him to be like, well, this is what I do. Right. But I was kind of just like, all right, bye. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, I'm Nice good. knowing you. Thank you. Next. Right. <laughs> like, it was so, I was like, I just felt sick about it. And uh, I think you're only into guys. Honestly, I'm into <laughs> nobody right now. I'm into absolutely nobody. <laughs> well, you can uh, find Vicky on social media. So this is part one, and in part two, Vicky is actually going to put me in drag for the first time. I've never done it before. Oh. Uh, we're going to pick out an outfit. I've been told there are wigs. Um, and do my makeup and see what happens. So all of that is going to be in part two. But before you jump over to that, Vicky, tell everyone where they can find you. You can find me on Instagram at Vicky DeVille or on Twitter at Ms. Vicky DeVille or on Facebook at Vicky DeVille. Thanks for watching. I've got a lot of content in production and I don't want you to miss out. So go ahead and click that subscribe button. And in the meantime, check out one of these other videos. And don't forget to send me your questions about sex to thomastalksabout at gmail.com. <laughs>